Even if you're not involved in food production, it's important to understand sustainable farming methods in order to promote and support them. We will consider production as raising food, including fruits and vegetables, grains, meats and poultry, and other animal products like milk and eggs. Within a community food system, production occurs on small farms, community gardens, school gardens, and even home gardens. The common theme is sustainability. So what does sustainable agriculture mean in terms of production? And why would professional farmers, the most critical producers in a community food system, buy into it? Is it really economically viable? To answer those questions, let's take a look at Green Gate Farms. This five acre farm lies eight miles from downtown Austin. The owners raise organic vegetables and animals without synthetic pesticides or herbicides. To do that, they start by building healthy soil naturally with compost and cover crops that help capture nutrients in the soil, enhance soil structure, and encourage beneficial biological activity that improves plant health. And they sustain those fields by raising a variety of crops and rotating them. That practice not only improves soil, it reduces pests and provides an economic cushion if one crop fails. Those basic methods, creating fertile soil and managing pests without synthetics, and growing and rotating a variety of crops, are the key elements of sustainable farming. Of course, sustaining the land is only part of the equation. In order to work, this type of farming must also sustain the farmer. Green Gates owners have diversified their marketing outlets, selling their organic vegetables, flowers, eggs, and meat to restaurants and caterers at their on-farm market stand which accepts WIC vouchers and SNAP benefits. They also serve around 100 customers a week through their Community Supported Agriculture, or CSA, program. Essentially, a fresh food subscription service that consumers commit to for the duration of a growing season. CSAs provide a reliable revenue base for a farm and allow farmers to plan for demand. In addition, the owners offer educational programs, such as cooking and canning classes for adults, and farm camps for kids, which also brings in extra revenue. Plus, they maintain an open door policy for volunteers and sponsor community events, ensuring that they stay highly visible in the community. The result is a thriving business, living proof that you can farm sustainably and make a profit. And Greengate's not unique in that regard. After reviewing multiple studies, the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy concluded that sustainable agriculture systems may be just as profitable as, if not more profitable than their conventional counterparts. In the case of Greengate, the annual gross revenue per cultivated acre is well into five figures. Part of that performance can be attributed to the farm's small size, which decreases the need for expensive equipment, fuel, and workers. It also allows the farm to operate without the huge debt that burdens farmers. So bottom line, a small sustainable community farm provides a couple of big win-wins for the farmer and consumers. First of all, the farmer benefits from potentially higher gains through direct sales to consumers. At the same time, consumers benefit from high quality food available at affordable prices. By operating without synthetics for fertilizer and pest control, a sustainable farm not only improves the community's health and environment, it also creates a safer home for the farmer's family. And while many farmers recognize the benefits of organic certification, that certification is by no means necessary to apply sustainable production methods on the farm or to participate in direct marketing outlets. Farmers who want to run a successful, sustainable community farm can follow the basic strategies identified at Green Gate. These include the ecological fundamentals of sustainable farming, as well as the economic fundamentals, developing multiple revenue streams such as CSAs, on-farm sales, farm-to-work, and other direct-to-consumer programs. Farmers also have to engage the community throughout the year with events and activities that bring people to the farm. In addition, farmers should research and learn from institutions and organizations such as the Southern Sustainable Agriculture Working Group, the National Center for Appropriate Technology, and Texas Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association. 
You'll find these and other resources by clicking the resources link. Other sustainable farmers in the area can also provide valuable information. Farmers aren't the only ones who can grow viable crops in volume. Community gardens also play an important role in the system. Williamson County offers a good example, the Heritage Community Garden in Georgetown. The garden came about in 2003 when the county's obesity rate was twice the national average. County health officials wanted to increase fruit and vegetable consumption in the community, so fresh produce had to be physically accessible and affordable. 18 acres were cleared in a Georgetown park that served a low-income neighborhood where access was most critical. In addition, the county sponsors a free cooking, nutrition, and gardening course called From the Garden to the Table, making sure people knew what to do with the produce they grew. Initially, however, the community showed little interest, and this offers the most important lesson. When you create a community garden, it's not a case of build it and they will come. In reality, community gardens are 90% community and 10% garden. In order to be a successful community garden, the process must begin at the community level with an assessment of interest. It is necessary to engage the community in all aspects of planning. These gardens have to be marketed and sold to the community through neighborhood meetings, media, and special events. Once people started taking up their shovels, community garden coordinator Natalie Vreeland had to act as facilitator, coach, and cheerleader to keep the momentum going. Over time, the garden grew from 30 to 80 raised beds and sprouted 35 in-ground garden spaces where individuals and families can grow food for themselves and even share with the community by donating or selling the extras. Now more than 100 gardeners tend those plots, which produce just about everything that can grow in Central Texas. In return for the use of the garden, growers must contribute 10% of their harvest, by weight, to the community food pantry, which accounts for 300 to 500 pounds of the pantry's food annually. Beyond providing access to nutritious, affordable food, the garden supports a healthy community by bringing families and neighbors together, raising nutritional awareness, and promoting organic growing methods. It also supports a commitment to live a healthy lifestyle by eating fruits and vegetables, and it increases physical activity, another key component of maintaining a healthy weight. Plus, it preserves a community's cultural heritage and helps develop community leaders. Vreedland noted that as participation in the garden grew, so did the level of community spirit and cooperation. As she put it, when people sweat together, it tends to make some fast friends. It's also worth noting that Vreeland has come up with a creative solution to pay for some of the garden expenses. She operates other gardens in the county exclusively for revenue. Food from these gardens, which are tended by volunteers, is sold in Georgetown's farmer's market. Vreeland can count on a steady flow of volunteers from the county's free garden education program because participants agree to volunteer 40 hours of labor in return for the free education. It's a system that reflects the kind of symbiosis one finds in a garden. Here are the steps for creating a community garden. Start by seeking other interested community members. Involve neighbors in nearby businesses, schools, churches, and civic groups. Form a planning team and make sure it's inclusive and representative of the whole community. This can be the most difficult and time intensive part of community garden building, but it's the only way to ensure the project is truly a community garden. Work through the planning team to determine potential needs and what local assets and resources the group may be able to tap. Choose a site, city property, a park, or private land that has water access, design and organize the garden, prepare the site, and promote the garden to the broader community to recruit new gardeners. The planning team may opt to attend a getting started workshop, such as Sustainable Food Center's Community Garden Leadership Training to increase its group skills in coordinating the garden effort. Click on the resources link for more ideas on how to get started. 
Once the garden's underway, the team will need to take steps to sustain it. These include facilitating communication among gardeners, conducting fundraising or seeking grants and donations, physically maintaining the garden through group work days, and keeping the garden going by recruiting new members when needed, hosting community events, and engaging in other activities. As you can see, there's a lot of work to do to build and maintain a community garden, but the community benefits are significant and long-lasting. Last but not least in the production mix are the student and youth gardens. When it comes to sustainability, this may be one of the most important components of a community food system because it connects kids to healthy food at an early age. A number of studies have shown that there's nothing like growing your own food to create an appetite and appreciation for fresh produce. According to the Journal of the American Dietetic Association, Garden-based nutrition education can significantly increase children's consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables and offer a host of other benefits. In addition to molding a positive attitude toward fresh food, the National Gardening Association reports that tending a student garden improves environmental attitudes or the way a student feels about the environment. It also improves community spirit, social skills, self-confidence, leadership skills, volunteerism, and scholastic achievement. One example of how growing on a little plot can make a big difference is the salsa garden at J.M. Hanks High School. This is a small 400 square foot garden that's in its early stages. Coach Patty Mullaney, who teaches both health and physical education, started the garden with two goals. Impress upon the kids the importance of eating locally and give her special education students a tactile way to understand how food grows. Because the kids all like salsa, the garden was set up to grow tomatoes, jalapenos, peppers, onions, and cilantro. With student help, she cleared a spot on the campus lawn, planted, and used her classes and volunteers to tend the garden. In addition to her own classes, she brought in a math class to measure the plant growth in the future, she hopes to involve science classes to determine soil structure and to make sure the soil has the appropriate nutrients for what they're trying to grow. As the garden expands, she also would like to involve other classes. When all of the vegetables ripen, she brings in a chef from the local junior college culinary program and shows the kids how to make salsa. The outcome of their harvest has been a positive impact on their behavior. They're eating more vegetables and getting their parents to as well. Another example of successful student gardens can be found on a KIPP campus, where the Sprouting Healthy Kids After School program takes a hands-on approach to teach the concept of a healthy food system. The youth grow their own fruits and vegetables and then learn to harvest and cook their produce. Students take field trips to local farms and farmers markets to learn from the experts. They also share what they learn by including parents, teachers, and community members during work days in the garden and at an annual harvest dinner. So, are there measurable results to demonstrate the program's success? Absolutely. The University of Texas School of Public Health evaluated the Sprouting Healthy Kids curriculum in 2008 and 2009. Findings showed that students who were engaged in multiple areas of the project improved their dietary behavior. In fact, Students who participated in at least two project areas showed a reduced preference for unhealthy foods, increased their knowledge of healthy foods, and even increased their fruit and vegetable consumption by nearly one and a quarter servings a day. Here's how to start a successful student garden. Identify the purpose of the garden, build a support team at the school, host a team meeting, choose, prepare, and plant a site, Seek donations or write grants to help you acquire soil, tools, seeds, or whatever else you need. For more information, click on the resources link. Then use the garden to educate. Two good sources of ideas are one click away at our resources link. Number one, the School Farm Education Resource Guide published by Sustainable Food Center. And number two, 
Junior Master Gardeners, produced by AgriLife. And finally, it takes a lot of hands to maintain a school garden, so make sure you have plenty of help through class projects, student volunteers, and even parents. As we've seen in this chapter, every aspect of food production contributes something different and important to a community food system. At the same time, each one supports the same core requirements for a successful system. Food that's physically accessible, affordable, and culturally appropriate. And a consumer who's knowledgeable and skilled. Next, we'll look at the share component of a community food system. 